Hi everyone, Sane Main here. This video is brought to you by a donation from John Pill, and here's what he has to say. Hi Sane Main, I have two sons in their beginning teens, and I watch your MGTOW content with great interest. With my donation, I want you to make a video about what I tell my 16 to 18 year old boys about women slash girls, and this from a MGTOW point of view. It is very easy for adult men to understand MGTOW concepts, because most adult men experience them. But how do you explain MGTOW concepts to young men, who must know these concepts before they will experience them, but are not that experienced yet to grasp those MGTOW ideas? How can you prepare young boys for the dangers of girls slash women without making them afraid of girls slash women while their male hormones are raging and encouraging them to bang as many of those girls as possible, and as soon as possible? For instance, how can you prevent them from not making themselves unhappy by trying to be a white knight? After hearing lots of sane man MGTOW videos, I understand that it's vital for young men that they have a decent notion about MGTOW knowledge. But until now, I could not find a video that clearly explains that. Sane man, could you create a video for this particular topic? Well, John Pill, thanks for the donation as well as the topic. But before I get to it, let me first tell you about today's sponsor, Body Transformation Made Simple. There is no money back guarantee for marriage for men. If you're not happy with her, you can't send her back. But with Drew Avery's book, Body Transformation Made Simple, you'll get into the best shape of your life, and you'll get a lifetime guarantee. If at any time you're not 100% satisfied, he'll give you a full refund, no questions asked. So don't be a simp. What are you waiting for? Sponsor link is down below. Anyways, now back to John Pill and how to red pill his 16 to 18 year old sons. First of all, if you think that being a white knight makes men unhappy, then why would you actually think that they would be doing it? Do you really think it's only about possibly getting sex from a woman? Helping women as a man means that quite often you get female validation, which for most men, myself included, if I'm simping, is more than enough of a reward. Or at the very least, it used to be until I realized how and why it works. By white knighting, nature is cruel because it makes men feel good for being taken advantage of by women. You get a dopamine rush when you open the door for her, and she doesn't even have to open her legs and roll out her red crumpet. John Pill, what you actually have to do is teach young guys that just because helping women feels good, i.e. being a simp or male feminist, doesn't mean that you should do it. It's not that the nice guy doesn't get the girl. He does. He just doesn't get to sleep with her. He just gets her attention and female validation from her. The thing to remember about red-pilling guys when they're younger is that they're far more receptive to it. They want to learn about how the world works and they're curious. They aren't jaded yet, but by showing them the difficulties of female nature, you are in a way making them jaded, if they see things from the MGTOW perspective. At the age of 20, I became red-pilled for the first time on how its psychology of advertising manipulates the human mind, and turns us into mindless consumers. Up to that point in my life, my purpose was to buy as much new stuff as possible, also to gauge my value based on how new and expensive my personal possessions were, relative to everyone else's. What I learned was that I was manipulated into behaving like that by big corporations, after reading a book called Captains of Consciousness by an author named Ewan Stewart. I was angry and went through a sort of red pill rage and eventually became depressed because I didn't really know what the purpose of my life was then, because I no longer found consumerism fulfilling. I was also red pilled with regards to religion, and so I started to believe in relationships and money instead. Then 2008 happened, and then I stopped believing in the stability of our financial monetary system. Then in 2013, I learned about MGTOW, and I stopped believing in women in relationships. I guess that at that point, I got to the point where I became a workaholic, and I'm still in a state of mind where I believe that work can set me free. The reason I'm telling you this, John Pill, is because telling your sons about MGTOW is only a piece of the puzzle. Also, the age you learn this information is very important. I got to somewhat enjoy my teens, 20s, and early 30s having sex and being in relationships. I walked through a minefield where marriage and or kids would have ruined my life. I managed to sidestep all of those things. I got to enjoy women at their best, and now that I'm older, I get to avoid them at their worst. With age comes greater mental illness and blimpification as they put on those cow pounds. If someone had told me about female nature in my 20s and taken away those experiences, first of all, I probably wouldn't have dated and as a result, I would have felt like I was actually missing out on something. I think it's important to get burned enough by women to understand them, but not too badly where your life is ruined, just like all the other red pill things too. I enjoyed being a consumer, but didn't mortgage my future for a chic condo. 
I learned about the financial system and to sleep well at night, I own some precious metals and cash out of the system. Once you become red-pilled about something, you have to find coping strategies. So that being said, you have two young sons that are finishing up high school and going off to college, no doubt. If you take away their innocence by explaining female nature, the positive will be that they will save and work for themselves. But the negative is they won't be able to enjoy sex and relationships in a normal way. When I went to art school, I was taught that before you can break the rules, you have to know what those rules are to begin with. Before you go your own way, I believe you need to date and get into relationships. So with all that being said, the way I would red pill a teenage boy is not to tell him about MGTOW directly or drop fancy terms like hypergamy in his highly hormonal lap. Perhaps share news stories about how women are having a hard time and are suffering because they can't find a successful man to marry. Maybe bring something like that up with them and get their take on the situation. Then pipe in by sharing how women have all the advantages in our society. Maybe you could also roleplay and ask them what would happen if a man broke the law and went to prison. And then a woman broke the same law and received nothing more than an equivalent of a small pat on the wrist. Remember that sometimes you can share small, lesser red pills and build on them. My red pilling process was built on information that I learned from the men's rights movement as well as MGTOW. Perhaps point them towards the MRM or PUA at first, and then when they realize that those things won't make them happy and offer them any real solutions, then they will find MGTOW on their own. If you've ever watched the Matrix films, then you will know what happened to Cypher. He learned the truth about reality and decided he wanted to screw everyone over so he could forget what he had learned. There's always the danger that they could resent you for taking them away from their happiness and carefree life. That you force upon ideas onto your son that would get him to question reality and as a result, he could never have a normal life again. He won't be able to be led happily to the marriage altar slaughter and ignorance will no longer mean bliss. But then again, remember that in the Matrix, Morpheus said that they have a rule. Not to free a mind that's too old because the mind has trouble letting go of reality. So you see, John Pill, red pilling your sons is not so much a story about how and why, but instead it's a story about if and when. What if your sons are not emotionally strong enough to deal with such hefty doses of reality? Every time I've been red pilled about something in my life, it usually led to a period of depression and anger that followed. Regardless of if the person feeding me the information was doing it intentionally or not. My university professors teaching me about liberalism and the dangers of uncontrolled capitalism freaked me out, and they were smiling on stage during our lectures. They knew what they were doing. In one of my classes, I got extremely angry and asked one of my professors, so why don't we revolt and violently take these people out of power? He said that you could do that with violent force, but then they would just find someone else to replace them with. You can't win that way. I looked around my classroom and I was the only one that was angry about the injustices of it all. Everyone else seemed happy and calm like pigs to the slaughter. John Pill, you might actually tell your sons about female nature and nothing might happen. They might just live a normal life and get into relationships and marriages. They could get angry and lash out, that's a possibility too. They could also choose to make themselves, their careers and personal development a priority and enrich their own lives. Or they could also get depressed and lose hope for any chance of a normal, happy wife, happy life. Whatever you tell your sons, remember that you're throwing the dice on the table and you don't know what's going to come out. I'm sure you want some sort of formulaic plan, but I don't know your kids. I don't know if they have blue pill hopes and dreams. I don't know if what you say to them will be the equivalent of someone crapping in their cornflakes. You want them ready for the reality of women and girls, but not to fear them. Maybe they should be afraid with regards to diseases and getting girls pregnant, but make them aware that in their teenage years, girls will be the least emotionally and physically damaged, that their opportunity to date and fall in love will never be this simple and this much fun. Girls aren't necessarily after them for their money at this point, but instead they're interested in them for their looks. Women are the most honest at this age, and if they aren't paying your boys any attention, then your boys need to hit the gym and work on their lifestyle. Women in their late teens and early 20s aren't looking for marriage or prolonged commitment yet. It's not going to be this good ever again. That's what I would tell sons if I had them. With regards to white knighting, to also help avoid your sons doing it, I would tell them about the friend zone if they already don't know what it is. Maybe ask them if any girl they're interested in just wanted to be friends, and if those girls just wasted their time, or ask them to do their homework for them. If they answer yes, then explain to them that that's what's known as the friend zone. Perhaps speak to them about how there are different stages in a woman's life. In her teens up to her mid-twenties, she just wants to have fun and ride the carousel, so to speak. Just don't use the word carousel and tell them that that's when women are the most honest about things if they're physically attracted to a man or not. 
but around 25, women generally start looking to settle down and to find a longer-term partner. They might not even find that man as attractive as the men that they were involved with in the past, but they want stability, and that's when they look for a guy with money. Also, that they don't always love that guy for who he is, but for what he can do for her. Again, all this can be said without bringing up the term going your own way. Once you tie certain ideas to a certain philosophy, people are more likely to fall into certain ways of thinking and beliefs. Maybe that's one of the reasons why so many MGTOW channels are also moving away from the label. They don't want to pigeonhole their listeners. I recently exchanged some words with Paul Proteus and he said something interesting about MGTOW. That this sort of knowledge is becoming more commonplace, and because of that the label will end up disappearing. His analogy was to skaters back in the day. They were once known as skaters, but once enough normies started doing it, people wouldn't call themselves skaters anymore. They're just going off to skate. Whatever you tell your kids, John Pill, is a risk either way. You can still red pill them without telling them about going their own way. I would leave the part about MGTOW out of the discussion until they've either been burned through a few bad relationships or until they lose their minds and think about getting married. That's when you need to tell them that marriage is really a funeral for a man. That they can still have a woman in their life without getting married. That she will change the moment he gives her power over his life. Trust me on that. Anyways, that's it for today. Thanks again, John Pill, for the donation and topic. Don't forget to smash the like button the way that high school girls want to get smashed in their pie holes with creamy Kahlua colored goodness. Bang the bell and check out the MGTOW mystery link. Follow me on BitChute, Twitter, and Facebook to get tomorrow's video today. Subscribe to me on Minds and Gap to get the video for the day after tomorrow. This channel's been demonetized, so if you want to get back at corporate censors, demonetize them by taking away their ad dollars by installing the Brave browser. Link is down below. It also helps me out and you get cryptocurrency for viewing ads as well. You can also help me out through Subscribestar. Thanks for taking your daily dose of red pills. And remember, a red pill a day keeps the high school friend zone away. So enjoy the rest of your day and cheers.